Hey friends, welcome back. In today's video, I'm making three meals that can probably be made with items you already have in your pantry. Two of these meals are meals my viewers grew up eating and they're perfect for extreme budget cooking. This budget feeds two people. However, you can easily scale this up and I've budgeted for a full loaf of bread so you'd have about a half a loaf left over. For my first meal, I'm making the easiest dinner I've ever made on my channel, and this is tuna with a creamy chicken gravy over toast. I'm using cream of chicken soup as a shortcut. If you want to save some money and you don't have this in your pantry, you can always make your own chicken gravy using bouillon. I myself don't use these cream soups very often, but they are a nice quick shortcut when you don't feel like making gravy. I added about half a can of water to the soup mix, and I'll add more later if needed. You could experiment with different types of soups if you wanted to, like cream of mushroom or cream of celery, but this was a favorite of one of my viewers. And you might want to experiment with which brand of cream soups that you like best. I learned that lesson recently when I was using one of the cream soups from Aldi, but it had a bit of an aftertaste to me and I just really didn't like it. But this great value does seem a lot better to me and I'm sure that there are some people that might prefer Campbell's or even Progresso. And I'm just gonna make sure that when I add in the tuna that I shred it well. This sauce should feed two people with two pieces of toast each. Of course, if you wanted to add one more can of tuna, you could always do that. Tuna is still a great price at a dollar a can. I think in terms of cost per gram of protein, I still think it's one of the best. I'm using bread, but of course there's lots of options. You could use biscuits, you could use hamburger buns. I always keep buns in my freezer and just pull them out one at a time to use them. You could also serve this over rice or even a baked potato, but of course bread is perfect for sopping up that delicious chicken sauce. I probably should have made this just a little bit thinner. So this is how it would be served. And I'm actually not going to try this because I don't eat tuna, but I also had an idea if you wanted to add something crunchy onto this that didn't cost a lot of money, you could always shred a carrot and add that on top. I can usually pick up carrots for about 20 to 30 cents. And also if you just add a dash of Louisiana hot sauce, it would really go a long way in this dish. This would be a great lunch to take to work. A lot of offices these days have a toaster oven, so you could just make your toast at work and then just heat up the other part in the microwave. For my next meal, I'm making creamed peas with potatoes on toast. And I didn't have any peas in my house, but I did have some of these mixed vegetables, so I just picked out the peas from there. But obviously, if you're doing this recipe, I would get the frozen peas. And some people say that the frozen are much better than the canned. And I'm using one potato because I still have potatoes left over from last week's haul. But if you really want to throw this dinner together quickly, you can use a can of diced potatoes. Those are already pre-cooked and seasoned. I had these two pieces of bread at home that somebody purchased, so I'm just going to be using those and I'll be using my leftover evaporated milk. Obviously, if you have regular milk, you can use that instead. And instead of toast, you could also make biscuits. And then I'm just slicing my potato. I just washed it really good and then sliced it in thin rounds. I think one of the keys to having a tasty meal will be having perfectly seasoned potatoes. And for that, I'm adding plenty of salt to my water and I'm gonna boil that. And then I'm just going to make a milk gravy. Not going to spend any time on this. You guys saw me make this recently, but basically just equal parts oil and flour. And then I'm going to cook that for a little bit and add some salt and pepper. One of my viewers told me that she adds Cavender's Greek seasoning to her milk gravy. And I thought I would go ahead and try adding just a touch of that. And you want to be careful not to get too much salt. I probably should have done that in reverse order where I added the Greek seasoning and then tasted it to see if I needed more salt because there is salt in that seasoning. But then I'm just gonna cook this a bit and then I'm gonna add in my milk. I've had several of my viewers tell me about this recipe. One viewer said that her parents were from the East Coast and made this often, but I also know that this is or was popular amongst Southerners. I don't know if you guys have eaten this growing up. If you have, let me know in the comments. 
When I was making this meal, I was thinking of all of the French sauces and how important they are to budget cooking. I use a roux frequently on my channel, which is basically just flour and oil to thicken a sauce, whether it be vegetarian sauce or chicken or beef or mushroom, but I wasn't sure if a milk gravy was actually considered a bechamel, which is a white roux with milk. And I think a bechamel normally has nutmeg added to it, which actually would have been good here. I don't normally add that as part of my milk gravy. So I'm thinking that our southern milk gravy is probably a distant cousin to a bechamel, but not actually considered one. There is one other difference also. I think the French sauces are typically made with butter and flour, and I always use just regular oil and flour. And then a Mornay sauce is typically just a milk gravy with cheese added. I'll show you that in a minute. First, I'm going to check to make sure the potatoes are perfect and I want them just tender but not falling apart. And I did brown my flour a little too much for a white gravy. Chefs everywhere would be aghast at such carelessness in the kitchen, but I'm actually okay with it because it'll taste exactly the same. However, if you want your milk gravy a little more white, then obviously just don't brown it quite as much. If you're eating low carb, you can adjust these recipes to suit your needs. You can swap out a low carb bread here or eliminate it altogether. There are also some highly rated recipes so you can make your own at home. You could also serve the cream peas over cauliflower rice or low carb noodles. And I wanted to taste these potatoes just to make sure that they were perfectly seasoned and they were. They were delicious. I could have basically just added some pepper to these and sat down and eaten these all by themselves. This reminds me of a Korean drama that I used to watch that showed these people that were so poor that they just ate potatoes for dinner. Have you guys ever watched Korean dramas? They are so good. My friend that I used to work with introduced them to me. They're known worldwide as a very popular type of genre in drama. It's funny because a few months ago, I was reading about how all of these American women were going to Korea in search of Korean men after watching these shows. But I'm digressing. I just never look at potatoes the same after seeing that. I added my perfectly seasoned potatoes back to the gravy and then I'm going to add it over the toast. Sometimes I make my gravy a little too thick. I like it just thin enough to pool down over the bread and into the plate. This is perfect. This is a combination that I just don't think I would have thought of on my own had it not been mentioned to me. And I'm wondering if this was a depression era meal. The potatoes and bread make this very filling and flavor wise, I thought this was delicious. This is a great meal for when you wanna use up some stale bread or maybe you've got some stale biscuits that need to be used up or you've got some frozen biscuits. One of my viewers was telling me how she likes to freeze her biscuits and then just pull them out as needed because she lives by herself. I do those same kinds of things because I'm usually just cooking for myself these days and it's a nice shortcut to be able to just pull something out of the freezer and have a quick meal. Some of my viewers also liked cream peas with tuna on toast. So basically just the same meal but adding in a can of tuna. Now I'm going to make a Mornay sauce, which is basically just a bechamel with either a Gruyere or Parmesan cheese added. And this would be perfect to use up the little packets of Parmesan cheese that you might have saved, but I only had one and I think I would need at least two or three. So I'm going to use this Parmesan cheese that I have in the fridge. I buy these in bulk at Sam's Club because I like to eat my popcorn with Parmesan cheese. It doesn't take very much. I can already smell the aroma of that cheese hitting the sauce and it really elevates this into something really special. You can use the same technique to make macaroni and cheese or a sauce for a different kind of pasta. If you just wanted to add meat to this, you could add either canned ham or chicken and if you don't have enough for the amount of people that you're going to serve you could always fry it up in a pan and then just use it to garnish the top with i don't know if you guys remember when i did that once with the chicken but it was so delicious and it really made the dish special 
but as far as I'm concerned, this doesn't need any meat added to it. It has such a sharp, rich Parmesan flavor just from that small amount of Parmesan cheese. It's delicious. If you guys have never tried making this before, I definitely recommend it. For my last meal, I'm making a curried potato soup and I'll be using two potatoes, but you could also use one of the canned diced potatoes instead. And I'm gonna be using some chopped spinach. I would prefer fresh, but this is all I have on hand. And I'll also be using a small amount of this onion that I have left over. But of course, if you wanna save money, you can use onion powder. And these are the spices I'll be using. I've got some celery seeds, some celery salt, turmeric, garam masala, garlic powder, and curry powder. I've never used celery seed in a soup before, so I'm looking forward to trying that. I'm only making two servings, but you can adjust this to suit your needs. And like I said, if you don't have any onions on hand, you can certainly just add some onion powder into the mix, but since I have these, I'm gonna go ahead and use them. Same thing goes with garlic. I actually got this recipe from one of my viewers and I'm kind of loosely following it. She uses whole fresh garlic, but I'm out of that, so I'll just use garlic powder. It's looking pretty good at this point. I'm just gonna give it a taste so I know how much bouillon to add in. It already does have a lot of flavor, so I'll just add a small amount. I'll blend up about half of the potatoes so that it makes a thicker soup, but that step is purely optional. You could also just use a hand masher and use that a couple of times, but I'm just going to use this briefly. And of course, if you wanted to, you could use a roux or cornstarch in water to thicken it. I usually use cornstarch in water if I want to thicken my soups, but this is definitely another way to do it. And it's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to add in my frozen chopped spinach. This would look much better in the soup if I added fresh whole spinach leaves in, but this is all that I have, so we're just going to make this work. I simmered this for a few minutes, and I tasted to see if I needed to adjust any of the seasonings, but it tasted just right to me. This is a really good soup. I went kind of light on the turmeric and the curry powder because I find it can be a little too bold for my taste. And I was wondering what this would be like with some evaporated milk in it. I have that left over from last week's haul and I counted this in the budget for the other recipe. So I thought I would go ahead and add some in. I do love this in my soups. I think it has such a rich flavor. So I thought I would add this in and then also maybe add just a touch more of the turmeric in here. But before I did that, I tried it like this. And again, it was delicious. I'm not sure how I like it better, but I think maybe just a little bit more with the evaporated milk. But if you're vegan, certainly you could make this and it would be delicious without that. A couple of videos ago, I talked about a meal from my childhood. Another meal that I remember was a soup with potatoes with onions. And then we poured evaporated milk in after it was plated in the bowl. It was so delicious to me. And even now when I'm sick, I'll make that soup for myself. It's just so comforting. Anyway, after I added in the cream, I felt I could get away with a little more turmeric. And so I added that in and it tasted perfect. I love the beautiful warm color that resulted from adding more in. I know how good turmeric is for you. So I do try to eat as much as possible in my meals. 
I had some people ask me how I take care of my cast iron skillet and basically I just wash it out with soap and water when I'm finished and then I put it on a burner that's heated up until it dries completely. After it dries completely, then I add in a coat of oil. I don't always do this step, maybe once every four or five times that I use it. And this is actually a little too much oil, but you get the picture. I'm not actually sure this is the perfect way to do it. It's just how I've always done it. And I've never ever had a problem with my cast iron skills rusting or anything like that. There is one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about before I end this video. Last week I was trying to do a $15 budget challenge, but I actually went over budget by $2.95. I went in and renamed that video to adjust for the change in the budget. So it does look like I still owe you guys that video. I'll have to do that sometime in the future. Unfortunately, last week was kind of hard for me because one of my family members had COVID. I'm not sure you guys realize this, but making those longer videos take so much time. And especially when there's a lot of cooking involved, and unfortunately, the lower the budget goes, the more cooking that's required. I'm always hesitant on how much cooking to actually include in those videos because I don't think it's always realistic that somebody's going to have that much time on their hands. Time and money are definitely both resources. That's it, guys. I hope you liked this week's video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. I feel the wind blow through my hair Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way Sometimes I give up, just wanna be on